But um, I'm originally, my name is Dennis Martin. I'm the, um, the chapter, the Joshua chapter president for St. Paul, Minnesota. First of all, I'd like to give honor to God who's ahead of my life. I'd like to honor Douglas Rain, national um, vice president. Um, I'd like to honor some more friends, um, the, the president of the entire Full Gospel Businessman Fellowship in America. Um, I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois, and um, how many people here have actually experienced the love of God? I mean, like, actually experienced the love of God, where you thought you knew what God's love was, and then he comes into your life and gives you a complete revelation of you don't even, you have no idea of what my love is, you know. So that's what, that's really what happened in my life. I, um, at eight months, my mom walked out. My mom and my dad was addicted to, to drugs, to um, heroin and cocaine. And um, my dad was right behind her when she walked out, you know, because, and, and my grandma, she, she raised us in church, so she took on the burden of rape. I wouldn't even call yeah, it was a burden because I was bad, man. <laughs> I was a bad little kid. But my grandma, she she took on me and my daughter, and she used to tell us, and I wouldn't agree with someone telling a child this, but she used to say that I raised my children, you know, like she had raised her children, you know. So when she, like she was just trying to install into us that she didn't have to raise us, you know. But I'm so thankful that she did because she raised me in church. And after a while of being, of being, kind of being like just forced, forced for you to go to church, you know. After that, after a while of that, one day she came home and was like, I can't force you to go to church no more. You don't got to go to church. I mean, we was at Sunday school choir rehearsal, Bible study. We was having our own Bible studies. We waking up praying. I'm like, Grandma, it ain't that much holiness in this world, you know? Like, because we, we go outside and we see the world. It's like we was the only ones in our neighborhood that went to church. And I was like, this, this little boy, and I got all suits, bow ties. <laughs> hey, hey, amen. <laughs> And um, after a while, she was like, I can't make you go to church no more. And I was like, for real? You for real? Like, I, you, you play it, right? She was like, no, I can't make you go to church no more. I was like, well, I'm going to be here when you get back, you know? <laughs> and, and after so much of that, after so much of just slowing down on going to church and not going at all, you stop going completely, you know? And then, like, the devil begins to come into your life, you know? So what happened was I end up getting into the streets. I end up getting into my environment and begin to go outside and begin to start hanging out with the wrong crowd and I eventually got into gangs because there was a lack of love in my life. I didn't have a mom, I didn't have a dad. You know, my grandma, she could only give me so much. It was a while, it was for a while I called my grandma mom, but when she told me that she wasn't my mom, I was like, what do you mean you're not my mom? You know, like, 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 where is my mom, you know? And we'd go to school, me and my sister, we'd go to school and they'd be like, where's your mom? My sister came up with the, the, the term, she's dead, you know, my mom, she used to tell people my mom is dead, but to me, like, once I learned what abortion was, I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus, because I realized I could have been aborted, you know, so I was grateful for my mom not aborting me and giving me a chance in, in this life, you know, so after after a while, I just end up getting into gangs, end up getting into drugs, end up just walking down a path of darkness, you know, and just complete darkness, you know, and, and so much of that is just like you know you get all of these people coming into your life that that come around for the wrong reasons you know like they they want like and i'm six six you know like they they want they want to see me fight you know they like oh yeah come on we got this big guy with us we gonna win you know and after after so after following the gang for so long it became the gang was following me because i was a church boy so they give us all, they give me all their guns, and I feel like, I feel wanted at this point, you know, because there was a lack of love. God has placed a longing for love in every man's heart, you know, and so now I feel like, not completely satisfied, but now I feel like I'm wanted, you know, because I never felt wanted. I've always felt abandoned and lonely, and, and just went through life like that, you know, just went through life, and I, I got a a particular set of skills, so I know how to do the, do stuff. You know, my grandma, she was a hard-working woman, so she taught me how to work with my hands. You know, she taught me how to, like, I was nine years old painting the road, you know. Like, I didn't 
cherish the value of it then, but I do now because I actually have a painting business now, you know, and she was teaching me how to paint when I was eight, nine years old, you know, and it's paying off for me right now in my life, you know, and God is so sovereign, God is so good, you know, but after just going through that lifestyle and just walking in complete darkness, I, I just got tired, you know, because you go through this cycle, you go through, like, the, the, the devil, he brings people into your life, and then they they go out, they leave out of your life. It's like a cycle. You, you like, you successful, not really successful because you got this longing in your heart and, it, and it's not satisfied, you know, you're not really satisfied. So what happened was like God, he was working on, he started working on my heart. You know, he started showing me like all of the things that I've been through. And I remember one time I was walking up the street now all these good things started happening in my life. You know, like I, I got a job, I got a felony, I, um, I, I told somebody else's story yesterday where I had went to jail and I made a deal with God. I was like, God, get me out of jail. I won't sell this drug again. You know, I was particular about what I said. And God, you know what, you know what happened? God honored that. God was like, you know, I, I heard in my spirit, I was like, I felt like God said, I may not come when you want me to, but I'm always on time. And I'm in jail. I'm all excited. I was like, oh, I'm going to get out of jail. It was like six months later, but I got out of jail on probation, you know, but I got a felony. So I moved to Minnesota and what happened in Minnesota is I encountered the people that love me for no reason, you know, because I had the, the drug dealers, I had the people that was hanging around because I was smoking weed and doing all this crazy stuff and I was able to supply my habit, so I was able to supply their habit too, you know. So I moved to Minnesota and encountered the people that was loving me for no reason, and I encountered this one guy, his name Uriah, and he was here actually last year, I believe, and shared his testimony, and I was like, Uriah was smiling, and I was like, there's something wrong with that guy, you know? Like, I have no idea what, what it is. Well, I'm, I was like, this guy's got to be kind of not right. You know, he got kids chasing him. He chasing the kids. I was like, yeah, it ain't that much happiness in the world, you know? So I got invited to a meeting about these people, you know? And I had never been to a praise and worship session, you know? Like, they said it was a meeting, but really what it was was a praise and worship session, you know. I hadn't even listened to this type of music. It was like a contemporary gospel, you know. I hadn't even listened to Misty Edwards, and I never listened to nothing like that, you know. Red, Red what's, what's going on down in Red, and I love that, you know. But, um, like, the worship leader was like, I want every, it was a huge church. It was probably like 20 people in this church, but the church was huge. She was like, I want everybody to go into their own comfort zone and be one with God. And I was like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> But, okay, so everybody get up out their seat and, like, spread out all throughout the church, and they, like, raising their hand and worshiping God, and I'm sitting in my seat, and I'm looking around, like, I don't know, if I'm comfortable, right? I'm, I'm in my, I'm comfortable, right? I'm sitting down, I'm comfortable, you know, like, you have no idea, you know? So, I just felt like I was supposed to pray at that point, you know? So, I bowed my head, and what happened, God showed me my life. He, he, my life, like, flashed before my eyes. And I got sad, and I began to cry. And and what happened was, at that moment, God was like, because you walk through a life, and you think it's just you against the world. You think it's just you by yourself because you got these trust issues with people. My mom walked out. My dad walked out. I don't trust people, period, at all. Why? I experienced that at a young age, you know? So I bowed my head, and God was like, God put the impression on my heart of my life, and it made me sad. I began to cry, and God was like, I, I carried you through that. And I, and I had a revelation of love, because I thought I knew God's love for me just being alive. Like, I'm alive, God gotta love me, you know? But, but when he told me he carried me through my life, it made me cry even more. And it made me ac actually experience. So you, 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 you got this thing of, of, of God saying, you didn't carry yourself through your life. It was actually, those footprints in the sand are not your footprints. It's actually, my, those are actually my footprints. And it was a revelation of his love because I, ex I was experiencing it, you know. And then Uriah came over and he confirmed that word. He said, God has not abandoned you. God want me to tell you he has not abandoned you. And now me and Uriah, we crying on each other's shoulder. So what happened, I went in the corner and I got down on my knees and I said, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, God. Take this all away from me. Take everything away from me. And I felt like God was like, I got you. Next thing you know, I got this 
all the tears stopped. I got this smile on my face. I, 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 I did, it was like a weight just got lifted off my shoulder. So ne the next thing I did was I went to the front of the church and raised my hands in worship. Unashamed, unashamed of freedom, unashamed to worship my God, you know. And, and, and off of that, so now I got a painted business now. I manage properties. I manage probably like 29 properties. I do electrical work. God has transformed my life in, in such a significant way. And he's given me, I do Christian rap. He's given me the name Living Proof because I'm just a living proof of his, of his love, of his grace over my life. His, like I love this. His banner over my life is love. Amen. God bless you all. Thank <laughs> you.